Friday before the November 2 elections, I gave a blunt assessment of what a victory by Republican Glenn Youngkin in the Virginia governor's race would mean for Democrats nationwide. It would show that fear and anger um, win the day. The fact that we're having a conversation about critical race theory that is not taught in public schools in Virginia, it just goes to show how Republicans have decided that picking at white grievance um, and, you know, tap dancing with white supremacy is their way back into power. And if Glenn Youngkin wins, um, yeah, the Democrats should be afraid because fear works. And, you know, I, I like to say, you know, whiteness is a hell of a drug. And going into the midterm elections, we will see just how successful it can be. Whiteness is a hell of a drug. Fear worked. And Youngkin won in a state President Biden won just last year by 10 points. The Wall Street Journal editorial board didn't like my analysis one bit and took great delight in crowing about Republican victories in Virginia. So what did all these racist Virginia voters do Tuesday night? In addition to electing Mr. Youngkin as governor, they elected Winsome Sears as lieutenant governor. She will be the first African-American woman to be elected statewide in Virginia history, writes the Wall Street Journal. Nice try. But invoking the name of Lieutenant Governor-elect Winsome Sears doesn't prove my assertion wrong about the role of race in the Virginia governor's election. Not in the least. Look, voting for someone black does not grant absolution from racism or being motivated by the racist dog whistles or nowadays bullhorns that politicians use to play on racial fears for political gain. And let's be clear. Having some of your best friends be black or family members be black or dating or being married to someone black or liking black music and culture is no pass either. Also, when you hear us talking about granting folks black cards, always remember it's a joke. Blackness isn't transferable, but I digress. What I'm saying is not meant to take away from Sears' historic accomplishment. A Jamaican immigrant who joined the Marines to defend this country, Sears was a member of the Virginia House of Delegates from 2002 to 2004 before being elected lieutenant governor, the first woman and first black woman to the post. And there is no denying the symbolic power of seeing a black woman in that position. But more importantly, because Virginia governors can only serve one term, Sears is now positioned to potentially become the first woman and first black woman governor of Virginia and potentially the first black woman governor ever in the history of our country. With the exception of her support for historically black colleges and universities, I don't agree with Sears on, well, anything. After all, she's super conservative and was a national chair of black, American, black Americans Making America First, whose goal, according to its website, is to promote Trump policy initiatives. So the power of her symbolism only goes so far with me, especially since she was part of a ticket that picked at white grievance and played on racial fears to win. Sears' election doesn't make those seeking absol absolution from charges of racism not racist. And her election should not give Virginians or the Republican Party a pass on being held accountable for what they say and how they say it to get elected, because it doesn't. If whiteness is a hell of a drug, electing someone black is no antidote. I'm Jonathan Capehart, and this has been The Sunday Show.